to watch the latest from India Science, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press on the bell icon to get notifications on all the science related videos. SARS-CoV-2 has brought the world to a standstill. Just after it was declared that India was in the end game of the pandemic, the second wave swept the country with full rage. And India is the hardest hit country in the world. Experts have been urging people to get themselves vaccinated to blunt the effects of the pandemic. Today, we talk about a vaccine that is expected to make an entry into India. Some are hailing the single dose Sputnik Light as a game changer. But does it really live up to the hype? I'm Nithi Kumar and you're watching Science Time, a show that brings to you the best that science has to offer from exciting developments in science and technology to futuristic solutions. And in today's episode, we will talk about Sputnik Light vaccine. Can honeybees detect COVID-19? And is breathing possible through intestines? Yes, you heard right, through intestines. Let's go on to story number one. Well, I'm sure you've all heard about Sputnik V, the newest COVID-19 vaccine to be made available in India. What about Sputnik Light? Some hail Sputnik Light as a game changer, merely because it's a single dose shot. And Johnson & Johnson, a vaccine available in the US and EU, is also a single-dose vaccine. The Russian Direct Investment Fund approved Sputnik Light on May 6, 2021. A few days later, on May 16, Mr. Dimitriv, RDIF CEO, said that Sputnik V Light is expected to launch in India soon. It is reported that RDIF's Indian collaborator, Dr. Eddies, will meet with the government to discuss its launch in the country. And while a single dose vaccine could be convenient for us Indians, what does the data tell us about Sputnik Light? Is it effective against COVID-19? Is it safe? Does it work against the variants? Russia said that the lighter version of Sputnik is a viral based vector vaccine and researchers insert the gene that makes coronavirus spike protein into adenovirus. The adenovirus's job is to transport the spike into our body. Our immune system recognizes the intruder protein and launches an attack by generating antibodies and T cells. And Sputnik Light contains a recombinant human adenovirus serotype number 26 RAD26, which is the first dose of the Sputnik. V vaccine. The second dose of the Sputnik V has recombinant human adenovirus serotype number 5, RAD5. And Russia claimed that Sputnik Light vaccine has 79.4% efficacy. The data was gathered 28 days after Russia's mass vaccination program, which was conducted between 5th December 2020 and 15th April 2021. The Gamalia National Research Center of Epidemiology and Microbiology, the institute that developed the vaccine claims that their lab tests showed Sputnik Light is effective against variants. And as for the price, the single dose is priced at $10, which is roughly about 730 rupees. The RDIF head said that the single dose regimen solves the challenge of vaccinating large groups of people in a shorter time especially when the virus spreads like wildfire. It could help achieve herd immunity faster, he said. So, from a long-term standpoint, Sputnik Light is not ideal, but in terms of rapidly controlling the outbreak with the second dose to come later, it's very promising, he further added. And let's talk about honeybees now. Honeybees make honey and wax. They pollinate plants, helping food production. Now, these creatures could also diagnose COVID-19, adding a feather in their caps. Honeybees have a keen sense of smell like dogs. Earlier, experts trained our canine friends to sniff out COVID-19 samples, but bees do better. 
because they need only a few hours of training to identify positive samples, the researchers said. Coronavirus causes a metabolic change in the human body that generates a unique smell. Recently, Dutch researchers showed us how honeybees could be trained to identify COVID-19 patients. After presenting the infected samples to the bees, scientists immediately rewarded them with sugary water and the insects got no rewards after being exposed to negative samples. So the bees extend their proboscis to take sugar water. After getting used to the training regime, the bees could spontaneously extend their tongues to receive a reward which presented with an infected sample. According to the researchers, the extension of the bee's straw-like tongues to drink confirms a positive coronavirus test result. And what's impressive is that the bees took only a few seconds to detect these infected samples. The infected samples were swap samples collected from the nose or mouth of an individual. And the scientists exposed the swab to five or six immobile bees in a container. The process of using honeybees as diagnostic tools are that they can be cheaper and that they can generate results immediately. So this technique could benefit countries that cannot afford the current COVID tests. And of course, if RT-PCR or antibody testing is not available, we could perhaps turn to honeybees for help. And let's move on to story number three. We usually associate the anus with excretion, right? But the organ is more than just that. In rodents and pigs, in respiratory diseases and distress, the tissues in the rectum absorb oxygen, helping the animals recover, a new study suggests. Who could have thought oxygen could enter the bloodstream via the anus? Based on these findings, scientists propose flushing oxygen into the rectum to save human lives if conventional ventilation methods are unavailable. According to science, the researchers studied 11 mice of them. They scrubbed the intestines of four mice to reduce the levels of mucus. The intestines of the remaining seven were left unscrubbed. Then, they introduced pure pressurized oxygen into the rectums of the four scrubbed mice and four unscrubbed mice. Three of the unscrubbed mice received no oxygen. Next, the researchers deprived these animals of oxygen. And what do you think happened? The scrubbed mice that received oxygen through the anus lived through the hour-long experiment, while their counterparts did not. Next, the team got pigs involved in the study as well. But instead of adopting the dangerous method of scrubbing the intestines of mucus, they used another way. The researchers injected oxygen with fluids, which can carry large amounts of oxygen and are often used as a substitute for blood during surgery. They work because these fluids are highly dense and hence can flush out mucus. They injected the oxygen-rich fluids into the anuses of three oxygen-deprived mice and seven oxygen-deprived pigs. The control group received a saline solution instead. The animals that got oxygen with the fluids mixture did better. Their oxygen levels in mice reached steady levels and the blood oxygen levels in pigs rose by about 15%. Well, the team thinks that this technique can help humans in respiratory distress. This is especially relevant in the COVID-19 era. Besides, scientists still need to compare this technique with conventional respiratory treatments such as mechanical ventilation. And in the end, please stay safe. By masking up, take the jab, follow social distancing and get vaccinated. Stay healthy, stay safe. Keep watching India Science. Namaskar.